Special greetings to you. Today we are about to witness a chappy test at low temperature or actually at minus 40 degrees. Among our apparatus will be acetone, carbon dioxide and other things. So for now I'm going to ask you to listen carefully and to see how we're going to perform our test. So let's go. What you need to know is CO2 or carbon dioxide is most of the time kept encapsulated at high pressure and which once released at atmospheric pressure it solidified below minus below uh, minus 80 degrees okay and at those time it's its solid state which we call most of the time dry ice all right so now our sample is being machined after being machined it's it's gonna be nosh and remember the nosh that is being done in our sample need to have its specific shape with specific sizes so that it can allow repeatability and so that it can allow uh, 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 consistent, consistent results in comparison with uh, what the material specifies. So this is how it is because remember when we performing tests we comparing the results what we know already or we trying to understand what's gonna happen if we need to put put our material in specific condition right because remember the material that we're using might be used for bridge construction it might be used for 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 for, for boat construction and when we have to to bring a like ship or boat those things work or operate at low temperature so it's very important for us to know how the material will behave at low temperature how ductile it will be and remember when we reduce the temperature or when we perform the test at low temperature we're increasing the of, of brittleness so okay so at low temperature the material is more likely to to to, to, to become brittle than at room temperature or at normal temperature so we need to know how it will, it will behave if we need to use it at low temperature so this is the reason why impact test is being done at low temperature at low temperature in order to know how much energy it will absorb it, it will absorb before it breaks All right so this is very important so without wasting any time we're gonna go and see how this thing is being done in so i'm having two sets of impacts so i'm placing them on my plate here which is gonna help me to be doing the the test all right so they're all having a v notch they're having a v notch with the same uh the same shape or the same geometry so there you go that's the first that was the first uh that was the first set this is the second set okay so after doing that what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put them and acetone so that is acetone there so so that is acetone there acetone has as characteristic to remain liquid to up to uh minus 90 degrees celsius so whereas water uh solidify or melt at zero degree celsius acetone instead melts at minus 94.7 degrees celsius whereas water boil boils at 100 degrees celsius or 99.8 degrees celsius acetone actually boils at 54 point uh i think 54 to point uh, to 56 degrees celsius so that's why it's very important in our experiments in our test to use acetone because at minus 40 degrees celsius acetone will still be liquid and remember in this test we need to keep our support to be tested at minus at minus 40 degrees celsius for 10, for 10 minutes as recommended by our testing codes ISO or ASME both of them so the reason why we need to keep them for 10 minutes is because because we want the temperature to affect the whole sample from 
outside up to the core or the center of our sample to be tested so that we can like we're not gonna get any uh, uh, inconvenience when we have to test us so at least we can be sure that from the outside up to the center of our sample up to the core of our sample the temperature the temperature is the same okay so check check now check now the very ice as you can see name check You can see the ice. So man, this thing can burn you. This thing can burn you. So now that the ice has been collected, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna try to put this one there so that it can also reduce the temperature, and then, you know, so that you know every any object which is in contact of another object with different temperature, what happens is that try to communicate in terms of the temperature. So everything needs to have kind of the same temperature so that we're not gonna have any inconvenience. We're not gonna have any inconvenience. You can see I put even my my thing that's gonna be helping me to uh, uh, to fetch the to fetch our our samples in the mixage as well so here is here are the ices okay an allowance of two degrees in both specs as me as iso so check now it's at minus 40.4 degrees so we're gonna keep it for 10 minutes all right so we're gonna be counting together 10 minutes and then after that we're gonna pursue with oh, so now it has been there for 10 minutes what we're gonna do is we're gonna perform the test so now we're gonna go for it okay. cool so now we're now that the guys are testing what will be collected will be the absorbed joules or energy the lateral expansion which will be part of the expression of ductility which go, goes hand in hand with uh, the percentage of ductility as well or malleability Now that the tests have been performed, what you see in front of you is one of the tested pieces. So we got our results. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare those results with what the spec says, and then from there we're gonna see if the material is okay to go ahead with the construction of either our ship or our bridge or whatever it might be. So it was a pleasure of mine sharing this video with you, and uh, I hope that you guys liked it. And uh, for now, I'm going to ask you to take care of yourself. And uh, remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Because you're going to be sharing a lot of stuff which uh, will be beneficial for all of us. So I hope that uh, I'm going to catch you on the next video. So cheers. Bye.